I'm Stephanie and this is The Huddle. And today we are talking to John Connolly, who's the CEO of Interblock. And the first question we have is, how was G2E for you this year? We caught up there in person at what we were calling the Interblock Fortress at the time. What has been the biggest thing to come out of the conference for you and Interblock so far? Well, it was a great show. Um, I, I have to say, I think this was one of the better ones we've had in quite some time. Um, you know, we launched, uh, as you and I discussed at G2E, we launched some new technology um, called the Smart Pit, which is really a fourth segment of our company. We had three product areas uh, pre-G2E. We added a fourth since then that's really resonated with the industry. Um, and as a result, we're, we've been running ever since trying to keep up with, um, you know, material planning and, and production capabilities and capacities heading into next year so we can we can meet the demand so excited about that um i think that's going to be a primary driver of growth for our company through 2024 and then luckily on top of that we had a lot of new uh roulette craps uh play actions that we released at the show uh which are resonating and starting to go on the las vegas strip and, and doing quite well and finally the the obvious acquisition of Aruze uh, continues to be a an amazing catalyst and filling a lot of the uh, I would say the the weaknesses or deficiencies we had as a company in certain product segments um, nicely and the the demand is is I think since we've acquired Aruze only uh, increased now that people really I think understand the future of the company and what's going to be happening with that team um, and as we discussed you know we. We opened an office in Tokyo, acquired the Aruze uh, team and brought them within the Interblock organization. And they are, as we speak, busy, busy coding and, and preparing new products for 2024 to add to our portfolio. So, you know, a lot going on, but but exciting and and uh, still still somewhat recovering from G2E. And have you been to Tokyo then since Las Vegas? Has it been a whirlwind of travel for you? Uh, no, I'm due to be there. Actually, interestingly enough, I was just working on my agenda. So I'll be there in a couple of weeks and doing my my 2024 budget planning process and locking that down here in November. Um, so I'll be in Tokyo shortly, hopefully with the team and and um, and really try to end the year strong and prepare for next year. Great. Uh, the launch that we specifically talked about happening just after G2E, so between the last time we spoke and now, was the Smart Pit Blackjack offering. And you said that's been resonating well for the industry? Yeah, so that so there's three components. Well, there's four. There, there's the craps, the roulette, Bakra, and Blackjack. Um, uh, we've officially released the craps and the roulette um, with several customers. The Blackjack, as we speak, is getting installed um within the caesars organization uh treasure island uh stratosphere several properties in the next couple of weeks uh was just approved so we're excited to see the results of that blackjack it will be a five seat the five seat product um however the three seat product will come out in march april uh and then we'll i'm more excited about the three seat product to be honest with you than the five but um but yeah, we'll launch that here shortly. So we'll have a complete smart pit um, that will tie together as we demonstrated at G2E and we're finally ready to, to go to market with that. And, and as I stated, the, the support from both the largest operators in the world and, and some of the smallest casinos in the world that you would, you would uh, enter have, has been, been resonating for different reasons. I think the larger operators see this as an amazing opportunity to attract new players and try to drive more profitability on a large scale because they have hundreds of tables within their organizations. The smaller operators, because of labor shortages and labor costs um, and just pure efficiencies are starting. <laughs> we're in discussions with casinos that I believe are going to go 100% smart pit uh, technology with their live table games. I don't think you're going to see a traditional historical live pit that's not going to be a smart pit, um, which is fascinating. I can't wait to see how before and after results um, uh, perform when we when we convert these casinos uh, to true technology across the casino floor. So, so yeah, very exciting. Um, I think we'll know much more in a few months when we talk. 
but the the craps and the roulette at least for now are continuing to explode and then aruze also has a live crafts product um which is a little bit different demographic that is it, that continues coming out of g2e to do incredibly well so um so yeah let's see that is fascinating just a quick question what makes three seats better than five in your opinion <laughs> you know me i love the love seats you know uh the, the, i love the ability no pun intended to put love seats in front of uh, three table, uh, three monitors on a blackjack table. Um, not to mention the fact that there's a lot of statistics that suggest having three seats versus five is more profitable. Um, and then obviously several of the facets we saw at the show where with a larger monitor, three seats, I can split the screen and do a lot of fun things uh, that that's never been done before in, in a live pit. So um, we'll see how that evolves going into Q2. I'm not quite there yet. We'll start with the five seat product, but yes, I am. I am excited about the love seat capability. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'm sure the players will be too. Speaking of G2E, we talked there about the potential for Interblock to launch some online gaming capability. And I know that you said that that would be next year. After seeing the focus on iGaming at G2E, has that sort of influenced you to speed up a bit more? Or what does that launch look like still? Yeah, I think um, you know, we're still 100% uh, uh, focused on entering the online market globally uh, in 2024 um, from both a, a live streaming and a remote gaming server perspective. Um, we have a partner company that we're working with on that initiative as we speak and are in some interesting negotiations with some of the larger operators um, around the world uh, currently. So. From G2E till now, in the past month, things continue to move quite aggressively, but I do not see us really entering uh, the market much before the end of Q2, just because there's a certain certain product offering and strategy we we believe in, uh, and we want to make sure that when we enter the market, we enter in 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 a in a in a in a different way. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but um, so sometimes taking a little longer is better to to have the end result you're looking for. So that's that's probably around the time frame you'll see us I hit the market. Most likely, most likely U.S. first, and then entering the international market shortly thereafter. Interesting to hear. Definitely got to keep the strategy going for the long term then, and uh, always try and do something different and not let it out of the fortress just yet. <laughs> yes, not out of the fortress yet. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Did you notice any particular trends at G2E that you weren't expecting to see this year in the gaming industry? Or did everything sort of confirm exactly where you thought the industry was headed? I wish I was that smart. I mean, I, I never know <laughs> surprises we're going to experience at G2E each year because there's so many, you know, innovative gaming companies around the world and top talent. And um, I think, you know, you're always surprised by some things, you know, uh, you know, obviously being interblock and, and a lot of attention focused on that and online, I, I think where, where I'm spending a lot of my attention at the moment is just keeping an eye on the integration between the traditional gaming sector and the online gaming sector and how those are evolving, uh, both independently and uh, in a combined fashion and integration fashion. So I think what's surprising me is the rate by which we're seeing innovation and concepts and player acceptance and quite frankly, the operators uh, focus on integrating the casino floor uh, and the casino environment with the online environment. And I think there's a, a healthy, I don't wanna say battle, but I think there's a healthy discussion going on right now as to is the online world gonna come down into the casino floor and really dictate or is, the, or is the casino floor and the casino, you know, decades of experience going to go into the online space and and really proliferate um, the next the next phase of growth? Um, it, probably more a combination of the two, uh, but who can figure that out first is going to be in a great position, and we're we're working hard to to position ourselves to be part of that. Um, and I, I think at the show that's really what what I was watching the most uh, most closely. Um, from the traditional gaming perspective, you know, the feedback I heard, not as much innovation lately, 
uh, because I think a lot of people are just so focused on online. You know, I think the traditional gaming sector is really focused on online automation, payments, um, and, and really emphasizing how to catch up or, or uh, be more relevant in those spaces. And therefore, there perhaps has been a little bit of um, a pullback on, on the attention we see in the traditional casino or historically the historical mindset. But I don't think that is an indication of lack of innovation. I just think the innovation is evolving into new areas. Um, and, uh, and, and I think it's exciting to see the industry, how quickly it's evolving. So, yeah. That is great. Um, and speaking of different areas and the evolution of possibly traditional casino games, one of the games I personally noticed at G2E was the Sikbo table game. And we know it's really popular in Asia, but do you ever foresee that game or table games in general jumping up in popularity in North America at all? So to Two components to that. The Sikbo is uh, because of the acquisition of Aruze, we overnight became an incredibly strong player in the Sikbo product category on a global scale. Um, in combination with the fact we had just launched a universal cabinet Sikbo in Asia that, that was taking off at the same time. So from a international perspective, Sikbo is quickly becoming one of the fastest growth areas of our company. Um, from a domestic North American perspective, it's very regionalized. I mean, I think where you find a, a larger demographic of Asia, Asian player base, uh, such as, you know, BCLC, California, um, New York, um, we do see SICBO uh, growing. Um, however, it is a far distant second to Baccarat. And I don't see Sikbo catching up anytime soon to the Baccarat demand and, and potential. Uh, that being said, um, it definitely on a global scale is growing because I think technology and innovation is facilitating that. But North America, you know, I think North America is going to, it's going to be a while before Sikbo uh, is in the top three or four products we see from an ETG perspective would be my my current position. Great. And uh, the second component of the question, I know it might be slightly controversial to say to a table games man, but slots seem to dominate a lot in Las Vegas casinos while table games are more uh, preferred by Asian players in uh, casinos across the world. What do you think about Baccarat catching up and table games taking off more in the US the way they are in Asia? So that, that's, an, that's, a very, not, that's a very interesting question. Um, so my background is in slots, believe it or not. So I, I'm a converted man uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, spent the past seven, eight years really focused on table games and technology. I think to your point, when you, when we, when you look at the online demographics and you look at the online propensity to play, without question, the younger demographic um, and I'm getting older now, but the younger demographic, which I used to, when I said that years past, I meant, you know, in your 20s and 30s, now it's more 30s and 40s. Their propensity to play table games is astronomically higher than what we saw, you know, a decade, two decades ago. So we know the younger demographics have a higher propensity to play sports betting, um, table games, than slots. However, that being said, there's still a huge population globally that enjoys the slot component, uh, both online and in the traditional sense. So um, so there's a demand for both. That being said, I, from a percentage statistical perspective, I think we're seeing a much higher growth rate in sports and table games um, because it started from a much, much lower point um, over the past five years. And I see that continue to trend up. Even when you look at casino, traditional casino floors, or you look at online play, um, table games are becoming something you can't ignore. Um, and I think when you think of table games, what's fascinating, you know, when we launched the smart pit, as we talked about, people were in some cases going, you know, you're a little crazy to take chips away. And I, and I remind everybody that, you know, for the past 10 years or more, there's been billions spent online without chips. People don't have chips when they play online. It's virtual. Um, so 
I think the traditional casinos and their their mentality is evolving rapidly because when you look at New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania, some of the data coming out of these states, online is the growth. And online's growing without a lot of the traditional mindsets we've had in the past. You know, there aren't chips. Um, you know, there's there's a, a different rate of play. There's a different interaction. There's a different interface, um, a different expectation. So I think we have to start bringing some of those best practices down to the traditional casino floor. And electronic table games, I think, is one of the closest uh, um, distribution methods uh, to do that. Uh, quickly and, and efficiently. So hence the smart pit taking off. So um, great question. And, and I think at least as interblock, we're very optimistic that our at least segment of the casino floor is continuing to grow and we don't see it plateauing. We think it's actually just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you very much for talking to us today, John, and we'll look forward to seeing uh, what the rest of the iceberg has before us later on uh, next year. Perfect. Looking forward to it. Great talking to you as always, and uh, hopefully see you soon. See you soon.